In today's video we are looking at the ASRock B550M ITX AC motherboard. So first of all this is an ITX motherboard which is a 17cm by 17cm form factor, so really tiny. This is mainly for ITX or SFF cases, small form factor cases. So if you've got like a little tiny case you can maybe do like an APU build on this little thing which is nice. Or you could even go with a little bit of a bigger ITX case and then put in a bigger graphics card and a full size graphics card and really make this a really good gaming PC on a little tiny 17 by 17 board so pretty impressive. So today we're just going to do a little overview of this little board. We will be doing a build with this uh, board in the Thermaltake Core V1 case which is a case which is going to come up. Please subscribe to see that. So starting in the top leftmost corner we have the CMOS battery. Uh, this is a bit of an odd place to put it but it's there and also where the IO panel is is a 8 pin CPU connection for your power. So it's a bit of an odd placement but it's there. A heatsink over the VRMs which is kind of nice but it's not totally covering all of them and it's not totally, it's, it's not perfect but it, it's okay. It's a little bit of uh, heat protection isn't it but not great. Top of the middle of the board we have a CPU fan connection uh, as well as addressable RGB and the 12 volt RGB old style. So a nice mix of RGB there if you're going to use either style which is nice and it's good to see on a little board like this. Next to that we have uh, one fan header and we do actually have two fan headers on this board as well as the CPU fan header as well so on an ITX board that is pretty decent. The RAM is only two slot but obviously ITX is only two slot. It's the full size DDR4 RAM not in any, not in a so dim rubbish. So, so if you are going from a full size ATX build and you're trying to downsize into an ITX, you'll be able to use your RAM, which is nice. Uh, this is this takes up to 64 gigabytes uh, of DDR4 RAM, probably about 4,800 megahertz or so. But I'll put it down below exactly what it takes. The 24 pin mains connector for your power. So obviously that's standard, which is great. So you don't have any of this funny like HP stuff where they make a custom power header for that. But yeah, anyway, four SATA ports, which is nice just here, as well as your USB free connection uh, for your front panel headers. Just below that, we have a USB two connection as well as your front panel headers, which is there. And then the second fan header is also there as well. Coming to the bottom of the board is our PCIe Gen 4 time 16 slot which is nice so obviously if you've got a gen 4 cpu compatible then you will be able to use that obviously if you're using an apu build you only have gen 3 unfortunately because the 5600g and 5700g don't actually have pcie gen 4 support unfortunately good to see that we can fit a normal graphics card in which is nice so if you've got that expandability and you want to put a gaming card in you want to make this a full gaming pc you can but obviously you've got the flexibility to make it to make an APU build as well. M.2 slot now, only one M.2 slot on this board, but perfectly fine for a NVMe drive. I uh, think, I'm not sure what the maximum is, but I'm, you can fit at least a two terabyte drive in there for sure, maybe even a four terabyte. And then just coming to the bottom of the board, we have our HD audio and a couple of other connections, but you're not gonna use them. Um, and then we're just gonna go on to, to the uh, IO panel pretty decent IO panel we have our video outs of HDMI and display port which is pretty standard now not any of these prehistoric ports like your VGA and DVI which is nice we have two USB free I think gen 1 ports so those we have a PS2 connection but I don't know who's using that but it's there USB 2 ports so two of them uh, we have a USB 3 Gen 1 port or Gen 2 possibly, I think it's Gen 2 actually, but I'll put it below. And we have our USB-C port as well, so that's nice to see. Um, USB-C is kind of where we're moving towards, so good to see that on a board. And uh, one gigabyte LAN or Ethernet connection, so again, pretty standard, as well as your audio jacks here. And then we have Wi-Fi 6 or AC, I believe it is. So you just plug in your little antennas here into into there, and then that's all good. And the separate I.O. shield is just here, which I'll just put on the screen now. So you can see that, and it's got like a little sort of, um, sort of like cushion at the back, which is kind of nice. So like I said, we've got an ITX build with this 
board. Uh, the Thermal Take Core V1 will be our case, which is a sort of like middle of the road sort of ITX case, not like a massive ITX case, like some more bigger ITX cases, but not obviously, not obviously like an APU type build case, which is like a really tiny, like sort of 10 litre case or not even that. I actually got this board for only £60, which was actually really good. I also got a Noctua low profile cooler with that as well. Um, we'll also see that. Also, I think there's going to be... I also have a video of the Noctua cooler, which I'm going to unbox as well, which is good. Yeah, so obviously please subscribe so you can see those videos. And please like this video because it really helps me for the YouTube algorithm. Yay. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I had a bit of fun with this one and I hope you had did too. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.